The Obsidian Codex, Episode 5, Decoding the Right. November 19th, 2016. Field Notes, Dr. Robert Kerr. Okay, <clears throat> last time my boys were here, Thomas logged into his Google account. His profile is still on my computer, so I've been uploading everything I can. These recordings, scans of the journals, my translations, to a folder that I've password protected and hidden deep in his chaotically organized mess. They want the journal in my notes? Fine. I'll take their damn money just to make them leave me alone. Then I'll publish anyway. It'll be too late for them to stop me. Toktakayo. It means our template, our size. Oh, measuring stick, balance, I get it. Well, they've weighed me wrong, the sneaky bastards. I'm colder than they are. Mr. Coy. Shit, I'll bet $800,000 that bastard coached Anabel Maldonado. She sounded rehearsed. <sighs> he probably bought the reels from her. Money talks. Whatever. All I need is the right. I was up until 3 a.m. trying to break the code. Because it must be a cipher of some sort. Pero nada. Took another crack at it after a late breakfast today. Fruitless. So I'm going to reach out to a brilliant young man. The only person I can trust right now. Who will keep this thing under wraps for the moment. Santiago Taboada, a doctoral candidate who worked as my research assistant for nearly a year. Yes, Robert? Hey, Chano, can you come over? <clears throat> I thought you said we were going to keep it professional. Well, we are, trust me. But I have a linguistic puzzle I need help on. Something unpublished you'll be excited to see. All right. Color me intrigued. Be over in a bit. Awesome. See you then. Oh, crazy. I hope you don't mind if I record this. No, go ahead. Uh, make sense to document everything. Give me uh, another minute or so. Sounds good. I'll get us something to drink. Ugh, had to get out of that room. When he leaned over and adjusted the lamp. Ugh, the clean lines of his form. A swimmer's broad shoulders and long torso. Moving smoothly beneath his t-shirt. Narrowing with maddening precision to that slender waist. Uh, he's thrown on some loose, tattered jeans, but they can't hide his physical perfection. Nah. They hang on his flesh in ways that make my chest ache. Shit. Delete, delete. Oh, fuck. How do you turn this thing off? November 19th, 2016. Field Notes, Dr. Robert Kerr and ABD Santiago Taboada. Well, Chano, your thoughts? First off, unless you find the tapes, you're going to have a hard time convincing people this isn't a hoax. I mean, there's plenty of overlap with the established canon of religious texts and songs, but some of this stuff is flat-out nuts and unprecedented. Yeah, I understand that, of course. Still, the language is flawless, and a cabal purportedly protecting secret knowledge for the better part of a millennium, well, that wouldn't have been in line with the state-sponsored religion channel. But what about the last section? In Tlalpolo Shoshli. What do you make of it? It's pretty clearly encoded. I see in the margins and at the end of the text that your grandfather made some initial attempts at deciphering the thing, but uh, he gave up pretty easily. Mm -hmm. Guessing you don't want to take this to a cryptographer. Huh? No, definitely not. We're going to publish at some point, Channel, but I don't want anyone else getting wind of this before we fact check and track down the tapes if they still exist. Let's try to break the cipher ourselves first before asking people to help. You're going to give me co-author credit on this publication? Of course I am. 
If this text is genuine, if we can establish its authenticity with the tools of archaeology and linguistics, it'll be a game changer for the study of Mesoamerica. It means pushing my dissertation defense back another semester. Not what I had planned. This text will put you on the map in a way your dissertation never could. When fate drops something like this in your lap, you seize the goddamn moment, kid. No need to strong arm me. I'm in. Your printer has a scanner, yeah? Let me send myself these pages. November 21st, 2016. Field notes, Dr. Robert Kerr. Oh man, I've got about four days before Mr. Coy uh, wants a decision from me. Um, either the money or whatever implied threat. Oh, well, look, I know Chano well. I understand the hunger for excellence and renown that drives him. He was hooked the minute he started reading the Codex. After an awkward, lingering handshake, he headed back to his apartment. And while it's only been two days, he called a little while ago to tell me he's already figured it out. I'm guessing he'll be here any minute. Oh. It was all that background yes. stuff on the keepers that clued me in. Oh, okay. In the opening lines, they received a directive from their god, Quetzalcoatl, before he left the physical plane. Right. Not to write the contents of the Shadow Lord down, to keep it in their minds, which they interpreted as meaning someone always needed to have it in their minds. So they created a pictographic codex to aid in transmission of that dangerous knowledge. Got it. So, according to legend, the human incarnation of Quetzalcoatl, the Toltec prince Se'akat, was born on the day one reed, hence his name, which also happened to be the first day of the year according to the solar calendar. And it, of course, has 365 days that are named using the 260-day ritual calendar with its 20 weeks of 13 days. It's Tresenas. Every 52 years, the calendar's line up again. Mm, that's how long it would take for, say, Akatl's birthday to fall on the first day of the year again. And um, don't the legends say he died on his 52nd birthday? Yes, by self-immolation. And that's what got me really thinking. Mm. If he had lived one more year, the days of his last year would line up with his first, but he didn't, ah. and the keepers know that. You mean they use that to encode the incantation? Yes. 20 tresenas, each corresponding to, to a, a different, different novel sound. Uh, <laughs> jinx. Um, but there are 24 sounds, Channel. Set aside the vowel lengthening. 20 sounds. Now transpose them to the 51st year of the cycle, shifting the sounds completely. Of course, the problem is knowing what sounds were assigned to what tresena. It's a substitution cipher. 88-bit key, simple stuff, so but it's in Nahuatlat. So existing tools for breaking it don't really work. If the words were separated out, we could start guessing based on the two and one letter combination. But since it's all run together, I used my mad computer skills, <laughs> wrote a quick script, and ran the first line of text through different options till a string of Nahuatlat words was generated. Well, what's with this grin? Jesus, Chano, don't keep me in suspense. What did you figure out? I had to clean up a sound or two, but it's definitely beginning of the right. Here you go. Holy shit. Interpetl itik miquiloa ipantlali iomio moquiqui moshima in platoli. Ika imatsin atlaka semele. Yep, sweet and freaky as hell. In the heart of the mountain was written, upon the bones of the earth was carved, oh was engraved this incantation by, by inhuman, inhuman hands. hands. My god, you are so freaking sexy right now. 
Stop recording and come here. Damn it. So much for keeping it professional. But we were both intoxicated by the breakthrough, giddy with discovery and conquest, and there was something else. A need, latent for weeks, but suddenly acute, tinged with madness I find it hard to describe. The touch of some dark talon on secret places of our souls, awakening nameless hungers of which sexual desire was a pale but immediate shadow. Hours afterward, maybe 30 minutes ago, I awoke alone in the darkness. Momentarily panicked, I flailed about for several seconds before finding the switch to the lamp on my bedside bureau. Santiago was gone, along with his clothes. He had left a note taped to the door. Robert, too pumped to sleep, going back to my apartment to work. Check your email. I showered. Drained of the evening's excitement, I stood for a long time under the shower head, letting steaming water pelt my numb flesh. I felt submerged, apathetic. I fantasized about standing on misty tropical shores, staring out upon vast black depths beneath a glassy surface. As the steam built thicker in the bathroom, a realization came over me. In the midst of my fancy, something terrible awaited. Dread curled cold fingers around my guts. At any moment, a shapeless bulk would arise from the enshrouded pitch of my mind. Ugh. With a disgusted grunt at my own foolishness, I shut off the water and toweled myself dry, wrapping a bathrobe around me and heading for my study. And here I sit, staring at my computer. My email inbox contains three emails from Santiago. Let me open the first one. Here's the next 100 words. Manos a la obra. Send you more in a bit. There's an attachment. Ah, he's deciphering the novel in chunks. Hmm. Let me uh, print this and go make some coffee. November 21st, rather 22nd, 2016. 3 a.m. Field notes, Dr. Robert Kerr. Santiago Taboada has cracked the code of the final pages of the codex. He is sending me the text in sections as he deciphers them and presently immersed in the work of translation. Several dictionaries and grammar books open in front of me as I render in English for the first time these ancient guarded words. For the better part of an hour, the arcane pronouncements have become my universe. A sort of preface, sketching history, the rite preserved in antediluvian tongues by inhuman hands, scrawling alien glyphs in ancient bedrock, its use four times to wipe life from the earth, musings on agony, warnings, and promises. Mm. Ah, coffee, that's what I need. Another front is moving in. Have to combat the encroaching cold. Mm. A second email. Interesting. Yikes. Now the incantation itself begins, calling on lurid and recondite beings. Way with the teo dormant and dire domains, sharing words wrought in the cooling fires of a young universe that would awaken those colossal gods and open the cosmos to their lumbering and frigid insouciance.
What's this world? Oh, it seems like the darkness is thinning around me, not in response to any illumination. Sunrise is still hours away, but as if reality is being pulled totter and totter. Can you hear those sounds, hypothetical graduate assistant? Or is my mind playing tricks on me? Oh, whatever. Oh, a third email. Let's see, click on the Word document, download. Huh, what's this? In addition to the deciphered text, there's an MP3 attached. Let's give it a listen. Robert, something's wrong. I just finished the bulk of it. There's just a small chunk left to go. I'm sending you the next part, but I, I'm not feeling well, Robert. I keep thinking about us. You told me the dean had found out that he directed you to stop fraternizing with students, but that's that's bullshit, isn't it? I know I'm not the first. People notice, Robert. They notice, and they talk, quietly. How many assistants have you gone through? Five? How did you end it? I'm pretty sure you trotted out the old, oh, the dean busted a story, every time you start to feel something. Because you don't want to feel, do you? Sure, you want pleasure. But beyond that, you have more in common with the monsters in your precious Finche Codex. I keep feeling like something's here, in the apartment with me, Robert. Whispering to me. Telling me you already have your eye on another unsuspecting fool. Rene? It's Pinche Rene Cordero, isn't it? You know what, you son of a bitch. Keep it professional, huh? See, I, I hear it again. Low. Dark. Pitiless. It sees into me. Past me. It, I'm nothing. But you know that, don't you? I'm deciphering this shit for you. But I bet you'll figure out a way to screw me over and cut me out. I'll be a goddamn footnote in your peer-reviewed article. You're the mighty Dr. Kerr, no? So here's your magic that destroys the Earth, Robert. Enjoy it. You're good at destruction. Oh, let me call this whiny bitch while it prints. The mailbox is full and cannot accept any messages at this time. Goodbye. Shit, alright, let me let me text him. Don't be like this, comma, kid, period. Call me, period. I care about you, comma, truly, period. Okay, that shit usually works. Field notes, I guess. I can't get a hold of Santiago Tabuada. I've sent multiple text messages in between attempts at calling. No response. I was worried, but now I'm just annoyed. Chinga su madre. Back to translating. Chan was a big boy. Hmm. Another message from Chano. Let's open it up. Hmm, this time it's just a single word. Goodbye. Featuring the vocal talents of Aaron Duran. <laughs>